Hi everybody, Tractor Man here again. Uh, you might have seen uh, Silver to Burn, Bernie, uh, make the silver tuning fork for me. It's uh, got here, so I figured I'd give it a show and uh, a little closer look. First of all, let's take a look at Bernie's mark is the anchor. Can we see that there? See his anchor? And then the 999 fine silver stamp. Boy, it's just a really nice looking piece. It's awesome. Let's take a look at. Here is the COA. The Burning Skull, Silver to Burn. There's the info. If you want an outstanding piece of silver custom made for you. And then of course on the back, the COA, the tuning fork, five troy ounces of fine silver sand casted by Silver to Burn, Bernie. Hot dog, as Bernie says. <laughs> anyway, um, the idea for the tuning fork... Oh, hold on a second. There's a note here. Thank you for the fun project, Tractor Man. I enjoy do doing business with great people like you in this great community. Silver to Burn, Bernie. The reason I contacted Silver to Burn um, was because I got this idea for a uh, t silver tuning fork. Um, the idea came out of... Uh, well, I was hanging out in a live uh, chat that Salivate Metal was doing. Oh, if you know, if you're a phone scammer, you might know him as Salivate Metal. Anyway, let's take a look at that. <clears throat> Tricky guy, ask a good question. What gold or silver makes the most pleasing sound when dropped on a hard metal surface? We're about to find out. Check, listen to this. This is how we're going to do it. Listen to this. Hold on. Metal against metal. I'm not going to show you the coin yet. I'm going to do a video on this coin. Listen to this sound. Are you ready? I'm going to do this sound. Listen to this sound. Here we go. Here we go. Listen to this. That's a silver coin, and I'm going to reveal it in a future video. Tractor Man. Yes, that was really a coin. It was not a tuning fork. Yay, though, I do have a tuning fork. Hold on a minute. If I can find it. If memory serves me, if memory serves me, right? Hold on. Search for a tuning. I might not be able to find a tuning for it. Ah, there's a tuning. I've got a tuning for it. Now I've got to rearrange everything I pulled out. I thought I saw that thing in here, in this drawer that I'm looking in right now. I could have swore I had it. There's another thumb drive. An Allen wrench, I have an Allen wrench. Maybe it's in the other drawer. Take away this memory now. Memory served, that memory didn't serve me very well. I wanted to make a tuning for the tractor man is probably already gone by now. Because I can't find that tuning fork. I'm all out of tuning forks. Deny the tuning fork. Sorry about that, my friend. I tried. I really literally did try. CCT says I think Tractor Man had time to make a bloody tuning fork and the time it took me to look. I agree. I agree half-heartedly there, uh, CCT. Okay, so first of all, Sal, where's the video on that coin? Did I miss it? Did you do it in a live chat that I missed? Anyway, let's hear that one. Um, so let's, let's see how this sounds. This is the silver one. This is the original that we used as the mold, that uh, Bernie used as the mold. It's made out of aluminum. Let's try the silver one first.
Well, really not much sound there. I think I know why. We'll get into that just a little bit later. If you ring it and hold it up to your ear, you can hear a nice pleasing sound. I'm gonna do that. It's quite faint, but it's a real nice sound. Of course, you know, the aluminum one. That's what you're used to a tuning fork sounding like. We're gonna look into the whys and hows and the whats of what we did here and uh, be right back. A tuning fork, of course, works um, because of the vibration of the tines when it is struck. This is the aluminum one. Let's take a look. Do you see that? Okay, here's the wiki for a tuning fork. It's acoustic resonator, two-prong fork. Blah, blah, blah. Let's go down to what caught my eye. Calculation of the frequency of the tuning fork. Now, the frequency at which the tuning fork vibrates, of course, um, let me open up Excel here. The frequency determines the note that is being played or that you hear when the tuning fork is struck. Should have had this up before. So, note frequencies. Middle C on a piano is the fourth octave C. And you can see here's the frequency in hertz of all these things. Um, we'll come back to this maybe. Anyway, the frequency it equals 1.875 squared. 1.875 is the smallest possible solution of cosine x times the hyperbolic cosine of x equals negative 1. Um, I'll just take their word for that. Um, of course, 2 pi, that's just a number. L is the length of the prong in meters. We need to remember that. So the frequency is reduced by the increase or decrease in length squared. Okay, now over here we have E is the elastic modulus or Young's modulus it's sometimes called in mechanics and materials and, you know, uh, structural engineering we always called it the elastic modulus. Young's the guy just just named after. And that's in Pascal's. Um, rho is the uh, density of the material, kilograms per cubic meter, so it's easy enough to look up the uh, density of silver and aluminum to do this. Um, I is the second moment of area of the cross section in meters. That's a little bit more complicated. We get into it's the second integral of the, well, basically the shape of the area of the cross section. So basically the cross section of the tines and how far they are away from the uh, central axis would be the halfway point between them. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time on that because as you'll see, we're going to be able to ignore that. Um, and then A is the uh, cross-sectional area of the prongs, also in square meters. Um, this I over A, these two geometric parameters, are going to be the same uh, between the aluminum tuning fork and the silver tuning fork. So we're going to be able to, what I'm going to do, you'll see here in a second, I'm going to calculate that for the aluminum one. And then that's what we're going to assume it is for the silver one, because it is. The geometry of the two are the same. That's nothing to do with the mass or the density or the strength or anything like that. So, first of all, what I'm going to do, this tuning fork um, that we ordered off of eBay, cheap little aluminum tuning fork, stamped on it was, the frequency was 512, which is, we come down here to 512, you can see it is a, it's close to the C in a, the fifth octave. Now, this is all based on, uh, a baseline of an, uh, the A fourth octave, or the A right above middle C being 440 hertz. Um, an interesting thing to note, and well, I didn't know this at the time, but the very first tuning fork was invented by a guy named Jane, or, uh, John Shore, and he was the King James II's trumpeter and lutenist in 1711. Um, John Shore gave Handel uh, he's, well, he's a famous composer. He was a core composer for King James II back in 1711. 
gave one of his forts, which is still in existence today, and it gives a pitch of C at 512 vibra vibrations per second, which, of course, is a hertz, 512 hertz. So the tuning fork we ordered matches the frequency of the original first tuning fork ever invented. So anyway, we know that. Here's our equation. So we know the frequency. Um, 1.875 squared is just a number. Um, 2 pi, just a number. The length squared in meters. Well, we work in inches. So I put the inches over here and it calculates the meters and puts us back over here. Uh, Bernie measured it at 3.875 inches. So that is the length. Uh, the elastic modulus is just what? 7 times 10 to the 10th is like 70 billion pascals. <laughs> um, so anyway, we know E. Rho, the density for aluminum, about 2,700 kilograms per meters cubed. And then I've got I and A blacked out here because we know all of this other stuff. And I'm just going to calculate that ratio of I over A. And I've just got a formula in here for that in Excel. And calculate for the geometry of this tuning fork. Is I over A is 3.031. And there's a bunch of after it times 10 to the minus 6. So a very small number. Um, so anyway, we know the, uh, we've figured out the parameters of our, basically our silver tuning fork. But first, well, let's go ahead and look at the silver tuning fork. You know, 1.875 squared is the same as the other, 2 pi is the same. The elastic modulus of silver is not really that much different. Um, for aluminum, it was 7 times 10 to the 10th. And for silver, it's 7.5 times 10 to the 10th, or 75 billion pascals. The density of silver, of course, is much more. And you can certainly tell that if you hold those two tuning forks in your hand. The silver is about four times more dense than aluminum, from about 2,700 to about 10,500 kilograms per meters cubed. Now, of course, I and A we don't really need. We know I over A, which I just copied from, you know, we calculated it from all of our known parameters. And so the length of the prongs, which we, you know, uh, Bernie measured that is 3.875 inches. Um, that would give a, a, a tuning fork of the same dimensions would give a frequency of about 269 hertz. Um, but we decided to, what would 269 be? Not that it really matters too much. It would be somewhere between middle C and C sharp. But anyway, it, that was a bit long before Bernie built that new box. And also, I kind of would thought it would be kind of neat to uh, hit a certain frequency. Um, basically, the standard frequency, A4 or A at 440 hertz, is what's known as, uh, I mean, it's the general standard for musical pitch as adopted by the International Organization for Standardization, ISO, um, at 440 hertz. So I thought it'd be cool if we could uh, recreate that and get 440 hertz. So what we're gonna, what we would do is reduce the length of that to raise the frequency. So let's say we went to, oops. We changed it to three inches, cutting a little bit off of there. You can see how we're going to be kind of we're going to be pretty close 448 hertz um, to be exact. I don't know. Let's go to 3024. If we're getting closer, 303 a little bit too much. 3028. I mean that gets us right. So basically, so I told Bernie cut it off to three inches and then let's see what that does. And theoretically, we should have a tuning fork uh, with a frequency of 440 hertz, which would give us the standard concert tuning pitch of the note of A above middle C on a piano. I thought, well, that'd be something to do. It gives us something to shoot for. Um, so anyway, there's a way. Let's check this here real quick. Um, here's the uh, back to the parameters for aluminum and calculating the frequency for a certain length. Well, let's go three inches there. So it looks like, you know, with the aluminum tuning fork, cutting off that 0.875 inches to make a three inch tuning fork, we should have a frequency of about 850 or so. Um, and you can, I mean, just little 3.01, 3.02, 3.03, 3.04, 3.05, 3.06, 3.07, 3.08, 3.09, 3.10, 3.11, 3.12, 3.13, 3.14, 3.15, 3.16, 3.17
reduces it by six. I mean, you know, 3.02. That 3.028, well, you know, about three, 838. I mean, you can, 28 thousandths is, what's that the thickness of a matchbook cover? Um, very, very, it's, the frequency changes. You can't, you wouldn't even really hear the difference in that. But anyway, we're looking for about, you know, 830, 840, 850. That'd be a good way to check and see if our uh, calculations are correct, actually. All right, I downloaded this simple, you know, tuner, basically. People can tune their guitars or pianos or whatever they want with this thing. You can see it's changing with my voice and stuff. <laughs> anyway, let's uh, see how this thing works. Let's check out the frequency of our aluminum tuning fork, which, of course, when we shortened it, we should have had, what, about 8, 40, 850 uh, hertz? Let's check it. What we got? I mean, it's right there. So, that basically tells me that our, uh, you know, our math is correct that we did. Now for the silver one, like I said, it does ring. I'm going to go to the settings on this thing. And you can change the volume sensitivity. I'm going to change it to high. Come back here. And again, we were looking for 440 hertz on this thing. Let's give it a try. See what we got. Oh, look at that. Wish you could hear that in the camera. Maybe you can, I don't know. So, anyway, as a, you know, as a tuning fork that rings nice and loud with a beautiful silver tone. Well, we didn't do that. As a scientific experiment, though, I mean, it's a resounding success. Uh, we hit the frequency, the concert A, the standard concert A4 pitch uh, that we were shooting for. So that is awesome. So why doesn't the silver tuning fork ring like the aluminum one does? Um, the physical properties, you know, controlling the frequency, really, the only physical properties are the strength. Basically, you know, that's the bending strength is the elastic modulus and the uh, density of the material. The only thing different would be, you know, the density. Um, we accounted for that in the, in the calculations. Well, let's go back up here and take a look at a, well, one of the more fundamental properties. A tuning fork is an acoustic resonator in the form of a two-pronged fork with the prongs formed from a U-shaped bar of elastic metal, usually steel. Well, let's take a look at an elastic metal. If it will do it. Here we go. Elastic deformation. Here, this is key. This type of def deformation is reversible. Basically, when a load is applied to an, a metal in the elastic range, it recovers back to its original shape. Um, the uh, corollary to that would be plastic deformation, where this type of deformation is irreversible, where if you put a load on it, the shape you know, remains in the deformed state. Um, Soft thermoplastic have a rather, rather large plastic deformation range, as do the ductile metals such as copper, silver, and gold. Well, I think that's our answer. Silver acts more of a uh, plastic metal or deformation in the plastic range versus the elastic range. Um, let's take a little look at the an example of this, or actually a uh, very specific um, demonstration of this using the tuning forks. All right. So let's take a look here real quick at this plastic versus elastic. On the right here is the aluminum fork. On the left here is the silver fork. Hold on a second here and let me show you what I can do without too awful much force. I can pry these things apart a bit. You 
And see how that silver one is farther apart now? Look at this. See that? That's plastic deformation. Because I applied a force and it deformed and then did not snap back. I'm not going to do that very often because I love this tuning fork. And I can, in the reverse, I can, without much force at all, put it right back where it was. That's plastic. Uh, perf uh, um, silver behaves in the plastic range. Now, let's try this with the aluminum one. I'm going to try to squeeze it together. We didn't affect it. Now, the Young's modulus of, of the two materials are basically the same. So, when I was applying the same force, the deflection in both of them were the same. The difference is the aluminum tuning fork just popped right back to where it was. And I couldn't, uh, you know, I couldn't make it stay uh, in a deformed state. So, I think that, you know, therefore, silver is just not the material to be used uh, as a tuning fork. Um, well, just as much as uh, silver, well, you wouldn't use it to, you know, in structural engineering, you wouldn't use silver to make a beam. I mean, of course, you know, being cost prohibitive and the density making it weigh so much more, you know, making it, you know, the whole building heavier, you know, you wouldn't want to do that. But when you apply it, these are basically, you know, uh, two cantilever beams. My undergraduate degree is in structural engineering, in case you were wondering. But, you know, in your beam, if you apply a force to it, like putting furniture uh, on that floor or having people in there or putting a snow load on top of the roof or anything, you get a deflection and it's going to stay deflected. And that's not good in a structure. Anyway, this was a fun project. I, do, I really do um, love having the five ounce tuning fork. That's really cool. It really does. If you could, you know, hold this in your hand and... Uh, smack it it does vibrate and you know i don't know if you could hear it on the camera but you know you put it up close to your ear and you can really hear it but anyway and again as an experiment i mean it was uh, it was a great success there so that was i mean that's really pleasing that's a really fun part of it and that's it check you later take a squeezy don't be sleazy oh he's gone i can't believe he just left all right